Thank you, Jake. OK, uh, now let's try to talk a, a little bit about uh, Susan Batra, great job that she did uh, with uh, pollen bees. Uh, this is a, an example of the uh, polyester bee. And let me see. I'm OK. Now this is Susan Garden Chet with nests of pollen bees. These are full of bees all the time, bees in, in and out. <laughs> and our objective of this uh, presentation is to recognize as the sectional scientific achievements and contributions that uh, Susan Batra has made to bees, social and solitary, and other pollinators make her publications also available to the bee cultural people, researchers, students, and farmers, and demonstrate how Susan uh, research has inspired new generation of solitary bee researchers, hobbyists, or bee enthusiastic and conservationists. Uh, a, light time, uh, a timeline of her work with bees can show different amazing things. She could be inspired on, uh, sorry, could be she get inspired, or oh, a lot of people get, go inspired by Jean Henry Fiverr working with Maxon Bees that is part of all the work that Mason Bees do. Uh, also, uh, through her uh, career, she were proficient on biology, all these areas of the knowledge that she got from good mentors like Michener, Sakagami, and Bohar, also her husband. And she did multidisciplinary work with a lot of good researchers that mainly work on different uh, identification of pheromones. And also she mentoring and impact on research careers of pollinators and pollinizations. She did a lot of outreach on pollinization, bee managing, and several species of bees, since the leaf catabine, Antophora uh, abruta, Antophora pilipides, and uh, Osmia cornifrom. But the, the amazing thing of all of this is very simple. I don't diminish the work that she did, but Look here, it's two pieces of air that if we look closely, is full of life. And I will say that all fields of research are no dead fields. Any area of interest has its own background, which may possible inspire the creative minds. She was very creative working with uh, pollen bees. As an entomologist, Susan de developed many uh, skills and also publish in all these kind of topics in which uh, already Jay mentioned some of them. But the amazing thing also is the chemical ecology and uh, the work that she made with pollen bees. And important to this, and this is the thing that we are trying to do here, is to uh, strong the networking on solitary bees as pollinators. Uh, Susan's uh, work blossomed in many areas of research. You can see here all the, the buds. This is like a spring in which uh, was the topic that she was working. And she did a lot of work on uh, floral biology, different uh, plants like red maple uh, and uh, other plants. Uh, she did pollinization, pollinator, social behavior. In behavior, studying behavior of the pollinator bees was a very strong uh, thing that she did. And uh, <clears throat> in this part, it's important to see that the, there are 20,000 bees worldwide. And from these bees, almost in, in North America, there are 3,500. And still, there are plenty of room for a lot of people to work on pollen bees. It's not just three or six species that we are focused on them. People are sometimes saying, oh, 
let's work more for alternative pollinators of honeybees. I think honeybees have their own niche already. She is happy working many plants, but still we need to know more about other uh, pollinator bees that can fulfill a kind of niche. There are specialists in some plants, and this is the, th the thing that still we need to know about bees. Susan Batra has 140 publications. Some of these we can record uh, 112, and she published in 49 journals or symposiums. The big uh, journal in which she published mainly her work was in the Journal of Kansas Entomological Society because she studied there, uh, also in New York Entomological Society, and proceeding the Society of Washington. Science, she hit eight times, it's a good hit. <coughs> and in the other uh, uh, journals, she published several other papers. This is the the polyester bee, she, uh, this bee get her, as she say, my, I have my eureka time or moment. Because when she discovered this, she say, my phone never stopped ringing. Everybody want to know what happened with this, how these bees make a, a degradable natural polyester that also challenged the mind of many people working in the industry. Also, uh, in this book, written or published by uh, Scientific America, in which the editors were two well-known biologists, Thomas Eisner and Edward Wilson, in which uh, they had like 50 or more uh, charters. In one, one of these is Susan paper on fungus garden and insects, written by her and his, uh, her husband. Uh, this is important paper because also this is a challenge for still for us and for the biotechnology, how the, the insects are able to uh, produce fungi and live from them as a food resource. Still, these are interesting uh, things. Also, Susan is a painter. She is an enthusiastic uh, for aesthetics but also she make a lot of good drawing of the, the bees. And all these drawings were just to illustrate how important it is to understand the way that the bees, every bee is a specialist with the flowers. Bumblebees sonicate the flowers. Uh, <clears throat> uh, other bees get the pollinia of the plants. And it's only these bees that do this. Other bees, like leaf cata ant, they don't mind if the flower of the alfalfa hit the face of them, but honeybees don't like it, yeah? And for this reason, uh, leaf catabine become an industry, and now from Canada and from the Northwest, uh, uh, a lot of people are using these catabees to produce seeds as an industry. Also, as a hunter, she, uh, when she grew up, she was uh, very close to nature, catching every single bat that moved. <laughs> and she developed a passion for wildlife. And co the most important thing is that she cultivated cultivate a sense of observation that helped her, her to discover many good things with the bees. This is something that we don't discover if we don't have a good sense of observation. And this is amazing because all of this, is, later on, she applied, and it's the way that she developed all the, the tools to make nests for, for bees. Also, as a communicator, she uh, produced a, a, a lot of papers, also produced briefings to the prints, to the media, and also she reached uh, the farmers doing a kind of illustrations in which she explained how using materials that are found in the farms can be a, a good nest for bees and how to manage them properly, that they can nest. And all of these uh, were a transfer technology to the farmers and also here, she showed how to transfer or 
start making a new colonies of bees, just moving, uh, covering them with a plastic bag and offering them new tubes in the same setting and just go on with the bees. But another important thing that she was very strong uh, and apply all her observation is in this uh, draft. Look, all of this is when bees get in love, all the plants that they become used, and they, when they are active, when they just go and get dormant, and when they start. But also, she had some markers. At the time, she was using some markers in nature, like crocus. This simple plant that grow around our buildings, it gives the sign for the farmers to start moving the, the, the bees to, the, to the, the orchards. And if people are able to follow this recommendation, they can succeed using uh, pollinators. Also, uh, <clears throat> we were, uh, I, I will say that uh, Susan was, is, uh, developed the pollen beekeeping or solitary beekeeping. And uh, this is a photo of her in the, in the we call this Batra uh, chat, in which she, when she was working here, she was doing a lot of work over there. And she, uh, last year, she was uh, doing some curation of these uh, settings and identifying the, the bees that were there nesting. Also, she illustrated very well all the, the, the tubes, the size of the tubes that need to be used, and also how they become possible parasites by a wasp. All of these recommendations that she say move the, the or che, uh, close the shed just to avoid the parasitoids come because the bees are dormant is a, a, a simple recommendation that uh, to control pests and don't need any other uh, a strong device. Also, she worked on chemical ecology and this was a very important a draft that she did in which she illustrated many things that happen with the insects, but also the bees have a special place here. I, I also, in this part, would, uh, like to make a comparison between the things that two big, big bee lovers did. Lastron, in 1851, he developed the mobile uh, friends, but uh, Susan in 1937, uh, born, uh, at the time she developed also the, the settings to produce pollen bees. And she applied all this technology to Osmia corniform and Antophora philippis. Because before then, uh, they, they haven't discovered all of this. Uh, also, here, we can say that uh, with bees, there are many terms that people are using, like apicultura for honeybees, meliponicultura for stainless bee, bumble culture or bumble bee keeping, and pollen bee keeping or solitary bee culture. Look the number of the species in which people have been working and still the room that everybody has to expand all the knowledge of these bees. As Susan was very uh, observer person and is uh, <laughs> very good observing things, she also illustrate all look these diagrams in which she illustrate the fly pattern on front of the nest, the nuptial fly, the courtship of Antophora pilipis, and <clears throat> uh, she give some recommendations just to use a simple nest uh, blocks and how the population uh, placing this in the farm can triple, trip, uh, duplicate or triple every year. Susan doing some curation of uh, our Antophora bruta in our uh, Batra chat. Also here on Osmia corniform. And 
Susan is still uh, very keen uh, to go to the, to the forest, and she was walking here looking for polyester bees, and all of a sudden she say, here it is. And just start with a thick uh, uh, tweet, uh, try to see. Here is uh, surrounded by bushes of blueberries, white blueberries. But also Susan is a very interesting person. She wrote this poem about the pollen bees that you just can uh, read. And I would like to say that this curious word, uh, quote uh, Thoreau, this curious word which we inhabit is more wonderful than is convenient, more beautiful than is useful, and is more be, to be admired and enjoyed than use it. Okay, and we, I would like just to say, and could be all of us agree, thank you Susan for showing us how to appreciate this. Thank you.